Yeah, thank you for coming on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. So, um, someone said one of the funniest things someone said to me during lockdown, and I'm really glad that my husband didn't hear because I think he would have wet himself laughing, was, um, oh, well, I bet you're coping okay because you're a yoga teacher. As though being a yoga teacher gives you this sort of zen-like superpower that everything kind of fades into insignificance and you kind of float your way through life, if only that were true. I have my moments like everyone else, and I think we'll continue to um, as, as we continue this journey that we're on. And I, I read this, I mean, it's quite silly, but I thought it, it made me smile. So there was a new word that's, that's come out called Corona Coaster. And it's the ups and downs of a pandemic. One day you're loving your bubble, doing workouts, baking banana bread and going for long walks. And the next you're crying, drinking gin for breakfast and missing people you don't even like. And it's, it's true, isn't it? It's it kind of our emotions are closer to the surface, I think. But um, whilst I have had my moments like everyone else, I think the yoga does help. It, it kind of brings you those pockets of, of stability within the highs and within the lows. So that's what we're going to do today. Just try and find a little bit of equilibrium as we travel and traverse this Corona coaster journey that we're on. So a little bit of up, a little bit of down on our practice. We're coming up, we'll be lying down. Yeah, that's what we're going to do today. A nice chill out. And we're going to start seated today. Um, so if you've got your handy cushion or block to one side, you want to sit on it if your hips feel a little tight. If anyone is absolutely desperate to lie down, then feel free to do so and I'll, I'll guide you to come up to seated as and when you're ready. But um, if you are comfortable finding a seated position, the beauty of Zoom is you can always hide yourself on a camera and just prop yourself up against a wall or a piece of furniture to sit up. So you can make yourself super comfortable. So your hands might be resting on your knees, you might have your hands on your lap, again, just wherever ever feels really nice and comfortable. And you might want to close the eyes. Some people feel comfortable closing the eyes straight away. For others, it's just not nice. So if you prefer to keep your eyes open, just lower your gaze to the floor in front of you and let everything in your peripheral vision become a little bit uh, blurry, a little bit out of focus. So you've really softened, softened your gaze. Uh, let's take a moment, the beginning of our practice, to begin to arrive on the mat, putting a week you've just had to one side, and it might have been a bit of a busy week, the children going back to school, maybe work restarting, so you, know, you might have had to once again kind of readjust to another change in our situation. And that in itself can be unsettling. So really using the practice to to find those, that, that sense, if you can, of, of equilibrium, even if it is only momentary, as we continue to ride our corona coaster. Letting go of the week, letting the shoulders just drop away from your ears so the neck feels nice and long, the chin just very gently tip down towards your chest so the back of your neck gets a chance to, to open up and to stretch out. And the best tool we have in our yoga toolkit to help us find that sense of equilibrium and balance is our breath. We don't need any expensive equipment. We don't need to have a large room in which to practice pranayama or breath work. We can do it just whenever we're feeling a little bit frazzled at our desk, at the kitchen table, wherever we are when we're feeling a little bit overwhelmed. We come back to our breath. So we're going to start with a lovely, short, um, breath-based meditation to begin our practice with. It's called heart breathing. If you get a bit confused, then just follow your breath as it travels in and out through the nostrils this morning. Let's give it a go. So we'll take a nice smooth inhale through the nose. If you're nice and clear through the nose, if not, breathe through the mouth. And then exhale fully and deeply through the nose. But the next time you inhale, inhale from the crown of your head to your heart, picture the breath. And then as you exhale, let the breath drop from your heart 
down to the ground. Next inhale, we inhale up from the ground and up to your heart. And as you exhale, the breath comes up from the heart all the way up to the crown of your head. Let's do that twice more. So inhale from the crown of your head down to your heart. And then exhaling from the heart all the way down to the ground. Let the sit bones sink deep. And inhaling up from the ground, right up to your heart center. And then exhaling, releasing the breath up from the heart to the crown of the head. Let's do that once more. So inhaling from the crown of the head down to your heart. And just let the breath descend from your heart to the ground. Inhaling up from the ground, right up to your heart space. And then exhaling up from your heart to the crown of your head. And just take a couple more breaths there, just letting the breath travel up and down the body, feeling that little lift and space through the front of the body, length through the spine as you inhale. And Trying to keep that space, but allow the sit bones to spread, allow the weight to sit deeply. Down into the mat as you exhale, feeling grounded and connected with your breath, with the floor beneath you. And if you're comfortable in that seated position, you can stay seated for a little longer. If you're lying down, feel free just to raise the arms above the head, if that's comfortable, or come and join us sitting up. So if you're seated with me, just bring your fingertips to the floor alongside the hips. We keep the gaze lowered or the eyes closed if you're comfortable. And then turning the palms up towards the ceiling. As you inhale, let's sweep the arms wide and up, maybe beginning to lift the chin, picking the eyes open as you raise the arms above the head, palms touch. And as you exhale, chin to chest, and we draw the hands down to the heart, little pressing of the palms together, opening up through the chest. Let's do that twice more. So gathering the breath as you take the arms all the way out and up, you might lift your chin, lifting your gaze, avoid throwing the head too far back, and then chin to chest, hands to heart, stretching out through the back of the neck. Lovely, just once more, moving slowly with the breath, no speed, no rush, inhaling all the way up. And exhaling all the way down, beautiful. If you're still lying down, come and join us seated. We'll bring the hands to the floor so we can extend both legs out in front of you. The legs a little bit of a shake and you might have a real bend in your knees this morning, particularly if your hamstrings are a little bit tight. Let's take the arms all the way up, lengthen all four sides of the waist. Take a nice inhale into that space. And as you exhale, let's come forward over the legs, that first exploratory fold. So the hands might be quite close towards you and the chest a long way away from your thighs. Some of you with a little bit more space and the hamstrings in the low back, the hands might be edging down towards your feet, and some of you might even be able to wrap your hands around the tops of your feet. Breathing some length into the body. So think about lengthening the body forwards rather than kind of slumping forward. So the crown of the head and the tailbone are almost lengthening away in a lovely diagonal stretch there. So we're trying to avoid any rounding through the back. And if that means bringing the hands down a little closer towards you, then so be it. Beautiful, staying with the breath. And then we'll walk the hands back up the legs, and shoulders above your hips, and we'll bring the right heel in towards your groin now. Remembering you can always prop something underneath that right knee, or just bring the foot a little bit lower down. Lovely. You might need to draw that left hip back a little, a little bit so you're square towards the extended leg. Lovely. Let's take the arms up as you inhale. And as you exhale, we're going to twist to the right. So that left hand's going to come across the body to your thigh, your knee, or just to your shin. Let's let it rest on the leg there. Other hand comes behind you. And let's try and draw that right shoulder back. Keep lengthening out through that left foot so the sole of the foot is facing forwards and the toes are pulled back towards your face. Nice and tall through the spine there. Lovely. 
and slowly, slowly release. Let's come all the way back through center. Inhale, sweep the arms up. And this time as you exhale, we're going to twist to the left. So the right hand's going to come across the body to your outer knee or thigh, other hand. I'm up on my tented fingertips, that hand behind me. My palm isn't flat to the floor. My arm's a little bit too short to do that. So feel free to adjust that hand quite close in towards your sit bone there, keeping you nice and upright on the, in the spine. Slowly, slowly come back through center. Last time, take the arms up. And this time as you exhale, we're gonna come over the left leg. So into that little forward fold, trying to relax that right knee. Again, some of you, the hands might be around your thigh or close towards your shin. Some of you might be able to cross at the wrists and take hold around the inside and outside edge of the foot, bending the elbows and drawing the body down a little tighter. But, um, you know, it's still early on in the practice, so be kind to hamstrings. Lovely. And then releasing, slowly rolling up. Right hand comes behind your right hip, looking down towards the hand. I'm going to roll onto the inside edge of that left foot and sweep the left arm up and across the body on a diagonal. You can stay there just reaching the arm up or press into that right hand and lift the hips. So we're looking down towards that right hand, just pushing the hips forward, still squeeze the bottom. And then we'll sweep that left arm across the body as you lower the hips. Extend the legs, give them a shake. And then we'll try the other side. So left heel into groin. Remembering you can pop something under the knee or just bring the foot a little closer down towards your shin. Let's take that little twist. So inhale, sweep the arms up. So we're twisting to the left this time. So turning the body and bringing that right hand across to your, your thigh or, or your shin, if that's more comfortable for you. Other hand again, quite close behind you, tucked into the sit bone, putting the toes of your right foot towards your face there. So that leg, extended leg is, is working strong. Nice and tall, making that effort to draw that back shoulder back, opening up through the chest. Nice and broad, nice and tall. Lovely. And then we'll come all the way back through center, unraveling. Inhaling, sweep the arms up. Ready to twist the other way, so to the left this time. So this time the, uh, uh, to the right, sorry. So this time the left hand comes across the body. Out of thigh or knee, so you've got your right hand behind you. Again, I'm up on my fingertips, that hand quite close, tucked in behind me, keeping me propped forwards on my sit bones. Lovely. Last time to come back to centre. Squaring up over that extended leg as you inhale. So this time we'll fold forwards over the right leg. So again, you might be crossing at the wrists and taking hold of inside and outside edge of the foot. Elbows come nice and wide, draw yourself down or the hands might be alongside your thigh or your shin, wherever feels comfortable there. And one side might feel ooh, a little tighter than the other. This leg always feels tighter for some reason. Slowly releasing. Shoulders above hips. So this time the left hand comes behind your left hip. So we look back towards the hand. Roll to the inside edge of the right foot. The right arm slices across the body on a diagonal. Option to stay there or keep looking down as you push the hips up. Reaching that arm across the body on the diagonal there. So you're looking down towards that uh, left hand there. Lovely. And then slowly, slowly, arm comes across the body as you lower the hips. Pop both legs out in front of you, give them a shake. And then bend the knees. Tuck the feet behind you and we'll find our way onto all fours. Making sure you've got some space behind you to extend the legs and in front of you. So right on the middle of the mat, moving any Lego <laughs> or furniture there. Spread the hands nice and wide. And just find that nice leg through the spine. Imagine crown of head and tailbone gently being pulled in opposite directions. And then we'll move with the breath in our Lovely cat cow. So as you inhale, dip the belly, tailbone lifts, chest lifts, chin lifts, just a touch. And exhale, that lovely spreading of the shoulder blades, pressing into your hands as you round up like an angry cat. Just roll with the breath now. Inhale, Mila was sleeping on the bed last night and the blind in the bathroom fell down in the middle of the night. 
I don't know who was more frightened and who moved fastest, me or me or the cat. <laughs> well, you know, the hell out of both of us. So finding that lovely sense of, of ease with the breath as you travel backwards and forwards. Lovely inhaling and exhaling, lovely. So coming back to that nice tabletop. So we're going to start to work into the hips now. So trying to keep both arms straight here. So it's a little tricky. You know, take your right knee out to the right without um, shifting the weight too much into one hand or the other, keeping the left elbow straight. And we'll just start to circle the knee. So if you start to bend that left elbow, it probably means you're moving um, in too big a circle. So just make the movement a little smaller. I've not got a big range of movement here. Some of you might be moving that knee in a much wider circle, quite tight in my hips. So let's do one more nice circle and then we'll place that knee down. And then we'll transfer the weight into your right hand ever so slightly so we can take the left knee out. And we'll keep again both arms straight if you can as you circle that left knee. So you might find that one side uh, moves in a slightly different way, maybe it, the circle is bigger or smaller, but it's a real kind of um, trick to keep the arms straight. So if you're bending one arm, then um, make the circle a little smaller. That can't work, is it? Let's do just once more of those. Warm, opening up some space, and then we'll bring both knees back underneath the hips. So we're going to do a little flow here, getting into the hips. We'll do the first one nice and slow. So coming back to that right knee, like a dog peeing on a lamppost, we're going to take the knee out to the right. Lovely. Turn that knee out to the right as you bring the ball of the foot to the floor, just alongside your left shin there, or knee. And we'll sink the weight back, trying to press that right knee out to the right. Look like a a little frog there, lovely. As you shift the weight forward, shoulders above wrists, take the right leg back behind you, ball of foot to floor, square up through the hips and open up through the back of the knee, pressing into your hands. And then we'll slide that knee back underneath the hip. Other side, so left knee out to the left, so like that little dog. On the ball of the foot, we try and open the left knee out to the left, ball of foot to floor, and sink the weight back. So you're getting a nice stretch in the foot as well. Shifting the weight forwards, extend that left leg back behind you, ball of foot to floor, squaring up through the hips, looking forwards. And then we bring both knees back to the floor. So we're going to add the breath. Right knee opens out to the right as you inhale. Exhale, ball of foot to floor, squeezing that right knee out to the right as you sink the weight back towards your heel. Inhale as you shift the weight forwards, extending that right leg back behind you, ball of foot to floor, opening up through the back of the knee. And as you exhale, bring both knees back down onto the hips. Left knee out to the left, inhale. Ball of foot to floor. Exhale as you sink back towards that right heel, squeezing the knee out to the left. Inhale, shift the weight forwards, take that leg back, ball of foot to floor, crown of head forwards. And exhale, both knees on the hips, once more each way. So that little dog peeing on a lap post, keep the left arm straight as you open the right knee. Ball of foot to floor, sitting the weight back towards your heel, trying to squeeze the right knee out to the right. Weight comes forward, square up your hip bones to the mat as you stretch the leg back behind you. And then bring the right knee onto the hip, just once more. Inhale, left knee out to the left. Exhaling, ball of foot to floor, sit back towards right heel. A little one-legged frog. Weight comes forwards as you inhale, ball of foot to floor. Beautiful. Exhale, bring the knees down. And just for a moment, sit back on your heels, prop yourself up on your elbows and give the wrist a little cooling. It's heavy on the wrist there. Beautiful. And then we'll come back onto all fours. Right leg comes back behind you. Left leg comes back behind you, so we'll find ourselves in a plank. Press into your hands. It might even be a bit of rounding through the upper back if that's too much this morning. Then just bring your knees down to the mat. Lovely. Crown of head and tailbone lengthening in opposite directions. Beautiful. Then we'll bring the left knee 
down to the mat underneath the hip. Flick the foot behind you, roll to the inside edge of that right foot, and we'll take the right arm up towards the ceiling. So we're in a side plank, pushing the hips forward slowly. Let's see if you can lift that top leg, flexing the foot. And if you can, we'll bend the knee. Let's see if you can catch that right foot with your right hand for a little quad stretch, pushing the hips forward. So I like to look down. If that's not for you, then you can just keep the leg extended and the arm up, or just bring the leg down. If you're in that little quad stretch, squeeze the bottom, push the hips forward. Beautiful. And then we'll extend the leg, flexing the foot, reaching the arm up towards the ceiling, take an inhale. And as you exhale, can you reach that top arm overhead, lifting your ear towards your upper arm, keep the hips pressed forwards. Beautiful. And then slowly, slowly, let's bring the hand down, lower the foot and come back into that plank, pushing the heels away, firming up through the belly. And then we'll bring the right knee down this time. Flick the foot behind you. Roll to the inside edge of the left foot. Let's take the arm all the way up. So you see the reverse side now from me, reaching the arm up. We might lift the leg. You might want to stay there or bend the knee so you can catch the foot. So you push the top of your foot into your hand, pressing the hips forwards. Again, I like to look down, but you might be looking straight in front of you there. Extend the leg, reach the arm up, take an inhale. And as you exhale, let's take that top arm alongside the head, lifting in towards upper arm, reaching toes and fingertips in opposite directions. Gorgeous. And then lower the foot. Lower the hand, let's come back into that plank one last time. Heels pressing away from you, take an inhale. And as you exhale, let's lower ourselves down to the floor so you might need to bring your knees down first. Beautiful. Just lift one leg and stretch it back a little further behind you. And then do the same with the other, opening up through the front of the hips. Slide the elbows forwards. So elbows are underneath shoulders coming into sphinx pose. So if your shoulders feel tight today, just take your forearms a little wider apart there, softening that back bend. Feel that the front of the pelvis is dropping down into the mat and that you're lifting from your belly button all the way up to the top of your throat there. Elbows pulling gently back towards your outer ribs. Lovely. Lengthen that through the toes. Let's feel an energy through the legs. And then just allow your chin to drop to your chest. Keep pressing down into your forearms. Roll your head over to the right, right ear to right shoulder. Stretch through the left. And then come all the way back through centre, chin to chest. Roll the head over to the left, stretching out through the right side of the neck all the way back through center and then very gently we'll lift the chin parallel to the floor option to stay there or begin to lift your forearms peel them up from the mat without the shoulders jamming up towards your ears softness in your elbows elbows hugged in towards one another coming into seal pose lovely toes lengthen back behind you and then lower down widen your elbows Bring your hands alongside your shoulders, push back up onto all fours, this time with the toes tucked. And if you're ready for a downward dog this morning, lifting the hips, if you want to stay on all fours, feel free. Coming into that downward dog and just start to walk out through the feet. Pedal through the feet, pushing one heel away and then the other. So if you've got um, an issue with hamstrings today, a downward dog is for you, you can always stay on all fours. And just explore that cat cow or just nudge your hips from side to side, getting a nice lateral stretch through the side of the body. Lovely. And if you're with me in a downward dog, let's just cease that pedaling and see if we can find that form of a deep inverted V through the body, hips nice and high, heels lengthening back and away from you. And breathing into that space, finding a comfortable position for the head, looking directly down. The floor beneath you or back towards your heels. And then we'll, we'll walk your hands back towards your feet, bending your knees so you can drop your heels down and slowly, slowly keep the chin tucked in towards your chest as you roll your way up to stand. Take your time, we've been down on the floor for a while. Lovely. So gathering the arms up and overhead as you inhale. And as you exhale, bring the hands all the way back behind you, either just bringing them to your low back or interlacing them. As you draw your knuckles down, think about creating as much length through your belly as you can. So it's not a back bend, it's about opening up some space in the front of the body. 
Shoulder blades drawing down the back, releasing the arms, taking inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale as you bring the hands behind you, either place them on the low back or interlace them. Draw the knuckles down, lengthen through the belly, tailbone dropping down between the heels. Option to begin to bend the knees, coming into a forward fold and the arms might lift up and over. If that's not for you, you can either stay upright or come into a forward fold with your hands on the floor. Just if you're with me, just shake your head, just make sure there's no tension in the neck. And then bring the hands down onto your lower back. Bring your tips to the floor and we'll all walk the hands forwards, coming back into that downward dog shape. So keep the feet where they are, just walk the hands forwards. And then shifting the weight into that left foot, let's take the right leg up and back behind us. Bending the knee, let's do those hip circles we did before. So inner thighs brush together as you bring the knee forwards towards you. And then opening out to the right, big circles. So do that a few times with the right leg. Again, trying to keep the weight relatively even across both hands there. So let's do one more big circle. And then we'll extend that leg all the way back behind you. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, step or help that foot forwards inside of the right hand. We'll drop the back knee. So fingertips brush the floor. Back of the hands lead the way. Inhaling, sweep the arms up. And as you exhale, release the arms forwards and down and try and reach them back behind you. So palms facing in, fingertips towards the wall behind you. Lovely. Inhale, back of the hands sweep you up. It's that lovely crescent lunge, and as you exhale, lower the chest, sweep the arms back, energy through the fingertips, lengthen back behind you, lovely, once more, inhale, push the floor away as you rise up, exhale as you swim the arms all the way back and down, last time sweeping the arms up, and this time as you exhale, let's bring the hands down to frame that front foot, and then keeping the left hand planted, you might come up onto a fist or onto your fingertips, Right hand to right knee. Start to turn your chest towards the right. Option two, tuck the back foot and lift the knee. And we'll come into a twist, taking the right arm up. Now if you've got that back knee lifted, make it work, stretch the heel away. And all of us just make sure that you've not popped your right hip out to the right. Think about drawing that hip in and back, so it's tucked in. Lovely. And if you're open across the chest, that top arm might lean back a little further. Beautiful, and then look down, bring the hands down inside of the front foot as you lower the back knee. Squeezing that right knee against your upper arm, left arm opens this time, so a little bit of balance required as you reach up with the left arm. Beautiful. Nice hip stretch, and then bring both hands down. Slide that right leg back all the way back, level with the hip. You might need to just walk your hands Shoulder width apart, toes down towards the floor, take an inhale. Exhale, squeeze knee to chest, and nose comes towards knee. Lovely. Inhale, take the leg back, take the chest forwards, look forwards. Exhale as you squeeze it all into that center line. Lovely. Inhale. We open up, and exhale, we hug everything in. Beautiful. Twice more. Whoa. A little squeeze of that right buttock. Last time, inhaling, extending the leg, looking forwards. Exhaling, looking towards that incoming knee. We'll take the leg back, take the gaze forwards, toes down towards the floor. Option to shift the weight to your right hand and extend the left arm in front of you. Thumb up, upper arm level with the ear. And try taking the arm and leg out on the diagonal, firming up through the belly as you reach. No, not a big move. Come all the way back through centre, hand to floor. Knee underneath the hip, tuck the toes, lift the hips downward dog. If you need a child pose, if you want a little wiggle out through the wrists, feel free to do so and then join me in that downward dog. Let's try that with the left leg. So shifting weight into your right foot, let's take the left leg up and back, ready for those big hip circles. So bend the knee, brush the inner thighs together as the knee comes towards you. And then we open the knee out to the side, lovely. So again, Keeping the weight even through the hands, so you're not wobbly across your arms, feeling nice and grounded. Movement into the hip. Let's do one more. Ooh, beautiful. 
beautiful and then we'll extend that leg all the way back behind you take an inhale exhale step or help that foot forward you can always drop the back knee and pick that foot up giving it a helping hand lovely ready for that little lunge so back of the hands lead the way inhale reach up and exhale we lower the arms just reach them back behind you so spread your fingers energy through the fingertips lovely inhale push the floor away rise up exhale chest comes down arms lengthen back along the side of the body like a superman cloak rising on an inhale last time swimming the arms back as you exhale arms lift all the way up so this next time the hands will frame that front foot so right hand stays on the floor this time remember you can come onto a fist left hand to left knee and we'll start to turn the chest to the left so you might want to stay there this morning or lifting that right knee so you're pushing the back of the right knee up towards the ceiling making sure that left hip doesn't pop out to the left as you reach the left arm up. So draw that left hip in and back. I think when a yoga teacher said that to me, I suddenly realized I do kind of tend to shove that hip out to the side. I'm sure I'm not the only one guilty of that. So top arm might reach back a little further, opening up through the chest. Beautiful, then look down, lower the back knee and the hands snuggle to the inside of the front foot. Knee hugs to your upper arm. So this time it's the right arm. Oh, this is wibbly wobbly for me. Right arm lifts up. Beautiful. As you look down, lower the hands. This is when we slide that left leg back this time. So you might need to again just to separate your hands a tad. Trying to square the hip bones off to the mat. Take an inhale. Exhale, knee to chest, nose to knee. And then inhale, look forward as you extend that leg back. So you've got length through the spine. And then we squeeze everything in, pushing into your hands. Lovely. Scorpion. So let's do this twice more. Inhaling, extending out and back. And exhaling, squeezing it all in. Lovely. I've lost count. Let's do one more because it just feels so good, doesn't it? That never was my forte. <laughs> Let's take the leg back and pause. Just turning the toes down towards the floor. Option this time, it's the right arm. So right arm, left leg, we've extended out. Thumb up, lifting that arm a little higher. Maybe offering them up on the diagonal, oh, if you wish. Coming all the way back through centre bringing the hand down, bringing the knee down. Let's widen the knees, point the big toes towards one another and just ease ourselves back into a child pose. You might again just want to cool the wrists, propping yourself up on your elbows before you extend the arms forwards, coming into that lovely wide kneed child pose. Imagine someone is gently drawing your hips back towards your heels. Whilst your fingertips maybe will inch a little further forwards there. Let's stretch out the shoulders by threading your left arm underneath the right. Come and join me if you wish. So coming into a little thread needle, reaching the left arm underneath the right, settling the head down and trying to open up that right armpit a little bit. So you're leaning into that right shoulder and stretch on the inner thigh. If you prefer to stay in a child pose with the arms extended, feel free to do that. And then we're reaching both arms forwards before we change sides. So right arm underneath left arm this time. Back of the hand slides off the mat, easing yourself down. And again, you try and open up that top armpit. So you might find that you're leaning into that right shoulder just a little bit more there. Beautiful. And then reaching both arms out in front of you. Let's slide the hands back under the shoulders as you come back onto all fours, knees underneath the hips. Tucking the toes under once more, finding that downward facing dog. And this time your feet walk towards your hands. So we'll come into a nice forward fold this morning. So generously bend the knees, especially if the hamstrings are paining you. Anyone with back issues, you can always bring your forearms just above your knees there. So you've lifted your head. Um, higher than your heart 
and you're supporting and stretching out through the low back. If you're with me in that forward fold, cradle the elbows. Oh, T-shirts over my mouth there. Have a little sway side to side. Nice and slowly. And try and move from your waist. So it's not your arms pulling you. The movement's initiated from your waist. See if you can feel the difference there. So you feel far more kind of in control, perhaps, of that far less likely to uh, pull something as your arms pull you around, maybe a little bit too far. Now, wherever you are, let's dangle the arms down in front of you and then slide them up the front of the legs to your shins, to your thighs, finding that lovely halfway lift. Slide the shoulders down and away from your ears, firm up through the belly. Gazing just beyond the tip of your nose, take an inhale. And as you exhale, let's fold down over the legs, crown of the head towards the floor. Inhaling, sliding the hands up the legs, shins or thighs. Little squeeze between the shoulder blades. And exhale, back down into that forward fold. Soften the knees this time, roll your way up to the stand. Take your time, take your time. And if you do feel a little bit dizzy, then just keep the arms down alongside you. If you're okay, then inhaling, sweeping the arms all the way up. And exhaling, bringing the hands down to the heart, lovely. I'm gonna change sides with my mat. Let me just bring the camera up a little bit so you can catch me now. So I'm going to mirror you now. So I'm gonna be stepping my right leg back. So just make sure that you've got space behind you and you'll be able to see the camera. Sometimes you need to move a little bit there. So bringing the feet hip width apart, taking the arms up towards the ceiling. I'll just turn around to face you for a moment, catching hold of your, so palms face forward. So let's catch hold of your right wrist. Draw that arm up towards the ceiling, take an inhale. And as you exhale, let's push the hips to the right as you take the arm overhead into a lovely half moon stretch. So it's a little tug of that right wrist. Draw the right hips back, so make sure that hip is rolling forwards. Lovely, come all the way back through centre, palms face forwards, changing sides. Inhale, tug, little tug of the left arm up. And exhale as you stretch over. Lovely, come all the way back. We'll do that once more. So catch right wrist, inhale up. Exhale, come over to the left. And now just see if you can push a little bit more firmly into that right foot. So really try and push the right foot down as you take the arm up and over. I just feel a little bit more space opening up. Lovely, come back through center. Let's change sides as you tug the left arm up. Keep that sense of space in the hip as you take the arm up overhead. And so now it's the left foot, push into the left foot a little bit more firmly as you take the arm up and over, beautiful. Let's come all the way back through centre, reach both arms up towards the ceiling, take an inhale. And as you exhale, let's fold down over the legs. Finding that halfway lift as you inhale, hands to your shins or thighs. And as you exhale, we'll bend the knees, fingertips to the floor so you can stride that right leg back. Spinning the toes out, heel in, ready for a warrior two. So look forwards, lift the chest. And then as you inhale, cartwheel the arms all the way up. And exhale, bending the knee, looking over that left arm. So you might need to adjust that left foot a little bit. I always need to slide it forward some. So I can sink down into that knee, lovely. So we're gonna bring the left forearm to our left thigh, but just let the right arm relax down alongside of the body. Just sweep that right arm forwards and up, turning the head if you can to follow the movement of the arm. And then reach the arm all the way back and down as you look down towards the floor. So inhale, we sweep the arm forwards and up, maybe looking up. Exhaling, reaching back and down as you turn the gaze down, lovely. So nice movements through the shoulder, opening up through the chest and that movement of the head uh, causes you to feel unbalanced or giddy then just keep the gaze down as you circle through the arm let's do one more big full rotation inhaling reaching up exhaling reaching back looking back looking down this time as you inhale take the arm forwards and up we'll straighten that left leg bringing the left hands to your shin or your thigh so we're in a triangle pose you might gaze down towards the big toe 
Some of you might want to roll your gaze up towards your thumb, checking that the arm is in alignment so your wrist is above your shoulder there. And then I like to take my gaze down, so I just check out what my arm is doing and then I feel a bit more stable looking down, lovely. And just make sure that you're not dumping all the weight into that left hand, you should be able to lift the hand away from the leg and still hold that position. If not, bring the hand a little higher up the leg. Lovely. Now use that right arm to draw you all the way back up, both legs straight. Swing your hips back to centre and then change arms. So we reverse that triangle, left arm arcs all the way up and back. Beautiful. Turn all 10 toes forwards, reaching both arms up, take an inhale. And as you exhale, let's fall down over the legs. And we'll bring the hands to the floor and keeping the weight in your heels, reach one arm forwards and then the other arm forwards. So you might be on fingertips. So you're almost in a wide leg of the downward dog position as you draw the weight back towards your heels, try and open up your armpits to the floor. Let the head hang, a little pressing down with your fingertips, lovely stretch for hamstrings up. Obviously, if that's a little bit too much for hamstrings, bend your knees and keep your hands closer back towards you. Lovely. And then walking your hands back towards you. Let's turn the right foot out to the right this time. Rising up, take an inhale. And as you exhale, we look over that right arm, bending the right knee. So you can always slide that left heel away from you to soften the hips if that feels a little bit more comfortable there. So this time it's right forearm to thigh, left arm rests alongside the body looking down. Inhale, we circle the arm forwards and up, maybe looking up. Exhale, we look back and then down as the arm circles. Lovely. So again, if that a little bit destabilizing to move the head, then just keep the gaze lowered and instead focus on that lovely movement through the shoulder. Inhale, big reach up. Exhaling, stretching the arm back and down. Let's do that twice more. Lovely one to release the shoulders to open up through the chest. So we'll make this one the last one. So the movement might be a big movement, might be a smaller movement. So let's keep the gaze down, but this time as you inhale, reach the arm up, straightening right leg. So right hand comes to your, your shin or your thigh. So in that triangle pose. And again, I'm just gonna look up, checking my arm is straight. So that back hip, that left hip is kind of popped up and back behind you a little bit. So you've dropped that front hip some to accommodate that stretch. Again, not too much weight in that front hand. And then we'll let that left arm draw you all the way up, draw the hips back into centre, and then we'll reverse the arms. So this time the right arm arcs up and back so we get that lovely stretch down the front of the body. Both arms lift, all 10 toes face forwards, take an inhale. And this time as you exhale, we're gonna come down, you might have a look, we're gonna butterfly the wrists. So the wrists are gonna to come together and the fingertips are turning out to the side walls. If that doesn't work for you, you can always bring your hands onto your thighs and work from there. So if you can, wrists touching or towards one another, fingertips facing out. Let's look towards your right fingertips. And as you inhale, scoop that right arm all the way up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, bring the wrists back down to touch, or more or less touching on the floor. Left arm lifts, inhale, so we scoop. We keep the wrist flexed as you scoop the arm up. And then exhale, let's bring the hand down. Let's do that once more. So we get that wrist um, stretch as you lead up with the fingertips. And some of you might be able to flatten your palms and get that lovely stretch through the underside of the wrist there. So back towards that right arm lifting, inhale. And this time as you exhale, let's bring the hand all the way around to your lower back. Or some of you might be able to snuggle it in to your left waist. So we're in a little twist there, turning the right shoulder open. If you prefer to look down, feel free to look down. If you've got your hand on your low back, it gives you a little bit of feedback if you've twisted your pelvis. So we're trying to keep that area of the back nice and stable as you open up through the upper back. Right arm lifts up, inhale. Exhale, let's bring the hand down, wrists brush together. Left arm lifts, inhale. Exhale, either resting the hand on your low back, or you might be able to snuggle it into your right waist. 
And again, just making sure that you've got your, um, your hips are stable, pelvis is stable. So we're not twisting there. We're getting that movement through the upper back and the shoulder open. And then slowly, slowly, let's bring both hands down. Let's turn towards that left foot, so a little pivot on your feet, all ten toes face forwards. And we'll step back into plank pose. Lovely, last little bit there, beautiful. So option to come into a full side plank or drop one knee, flip the foot behind you and come into that supported side plank. So let's drop the heels to the left or bring the knee down and flip the foot behind you and take the right arm up. So if you're in that full side plank, you're pushing the hips up towards the ceiling. If you're in that supported version, the knee is on the floor there. Beautiful. Let's come back through centre. And then either just flicking your heels over to the right, taking the left arm up, or this time we bring the right knee down. So whatever we're doing, we're trying to push that top hip up towards the ceiling there. Beautiful, coming back into that plank pose. Gorgeous, and then bring one knee down, bring the other knee down. Oh, take a child pose, arms wherever is comfortable. You might want to feed the arms back alongside you, turning the palms up. You might want to support your head, resting your forehead on your stacked hands with the elbows wide. I really like that version because it opens up some space in my upper back. So even though my forehead would reach the floor, I just feel there, it really stretches my upper back. It's quite a comforting position. So have a little play with what works for you. If you need to take your knees a little further apart, feel free to do so. Oh, we've been up, we've been down, we've been sideways. We've had our own little roller coaster on the mat today. And so now to come back to that. Balance and support of the floor. So when you're ready, just lift the chest up, walk your hands back towards your knees. And we'll drop the bottom to one side. And just pop the legs out in front of you. Let me adjust the screen there so you can see me down on the floor. Beautiful. So let's slide the heels in towards you. So if your hips are very tight, you can keep the heels a long way away from your groin, so you've got a big diamond shape. If you're more comfortable in the hips, you can bring the heels a little closer in towards you. Hands resting on your shins or down towards your ankles. Take an inhale as you sit up nice and tall. And as you exhale, lead with your chest as you gently stretch forward. So your, your elbows might be gently pressing the knees down. But we've still got that lovely sense of length through the back. Now we've got the option to stay there, gently easing the knees down. Or you can reach both arms out in front of you and that's when we drop the gaze down towards your belly button. A little rounding through the back, fingertips reaching forwards. Trying to just let the knees relax out to the side. Slowly, slowly, whatever position we're in, let's lift shoulders back in line with hips. Just bring your hands to your knees, draw the knees together and then extend the legs out in front of you. So we'll bring the right heel in towards you. And we've got the option to stay there. We've got the option to cross the foot over. You can lean into that left bottom and hook that left leg round behind you, but make sure you've got room for your sit bone there. So using your hand or your elbow, left hand or left elbow, to squeeze the knee in towards the chest. Let's take the right arm up and a big circle back behind you. And I'm going to wrap my hand around my low back there, rather than having my fingertips to the floor, because what I tend to do there is lean. Now you might not be uh, cheaty like me, <laughs> so feel free to bring your fingertips to the floor. But I just prefer that. And then I've got short arms as well, so sometimes I'm comfortable to bring my fingertips to the floor. So whatever position works for you, let's get that nice sense of rotation through the spine. Just turning the chest around. Lovely. 
slowly unravel, come back to center, keep the legs as they are, but just turn your torso around the opposite way. So you're turning around towards the left, just finding that nice openness through the chest. Lovely, back through center. Just lean into your hands so you can unravel, give them a shake, and then drawing the left heel in, either foot to the floor or crossing it over, or leaning into the right bottom so you can hook that right foot back. Make space for your bottom though. Getting yourself nice and comfortable. Using the hand if you need some more space or hugging the knee in with your right elbow. I like to take that left arm up and then circle it back behind me, fingertips to floor or back of the hand on your low back. And just as we did when we are in our warrior, moving that arm first of all, just really gets the openness through the chest. If like me, you've got your foot, underneath foot hooked around to the side, just make sure that the heel is sufficiently moved so you can really ground down through both sit bones there. You're really heavy in the hips. Lovely, slowly release. Legs stay as they are, but just bring the torso back and then round the opposite way. Just decompress through the spine. slowly slowly extend the legs give them a little bit of a shake and then bring your heels quite close in towards your bottom there so as you ease your way down into your backs heels close to bottom feet to floor hip width apart knees point up towards the ceiling let's take a lovely shoulder bridge last little movement there so i get so far and then i kind of have to pick my head up and, and take my head a little further back behind me Create some space to lift the chest, adjust the position of your feet. You might need to walk them in or take them a little further away from you. We've got the option to tuck the shoulder blades one and then the other underneath you so you can interlace your hands and get that powering up through the hips, that lifting up of your chest. Feeling grounded through your feet, knees, forwards, parallel. And then bring the arms alongside you. You might want to lift up your heels as you wheel your spine down, trying to keep the knees pointing forwards, lowering the hips, lowering the heels, stretching out one leg and then the other leg and taking both arms back above the head. And a nice wide V if they don't touch the floor behind you with the upper arms by your ears as you find that lovely full body stretch. Ah, and then when you're ready to lower the arms alongside you, allowing the palms to face up towards the ceiling, or bringing one hand onto your chest, one onto your belly, finding a comfortable position. Just to close our practice with a few moments in Shavasana. So if it's uncomfortable with your legs outstretched, feel free to bring your heels back in towards your bottom. Maybe take your feet wide and allow your inner knees to knock together. So after all of the movement, the ups and the downs, the forwards, the backs, the stretches, we settle into stillness. And begin to feel now the chest rising and falling with each breath. And begin to feel the belly rising and falling with each breath. Inhaling to receive the breath. And exhaling to release the breath. As you receive the breath, just feeling the air enter through your nostrils. And as you release the breath, you might notice there's a little warmth in that breath as it tickles your top lip. The breath having been warmed by the body.
So feeling those three parts of your breath as you inhale, feeling the belly rise, the ribs expand, and finally the chest lifts. And as you exhale, the breath leaves the chest, the ribs fall, and the belly contracts. Inhaling, and the belly lifts, the ribs expand, and the chest opens. And as you breathe out, the breath leaves the chest, the ribs fall, and the belly contracts. So just following that wave-like fluidity of each inhale and exhale now. Feeling the fluidity of your breath. Enjoying that sense of calmness and ease and steadiness that comes from simply focusing on your breath. Let's take three more of those complete cycles of breath. Belly, the ribs, and the chest as you inhale. And the chest, ribs, and belly as you exhale. And just three more complete cycles of that breath. And when we finish that third cycle of the breath, just allow the breath now to return to the natural rhythm. And you might notice now that the breath feels perhaps a little smoother, a little deeper. If your knees are bent, you might want to stretch out the legs again, gently opening up into the space in front of you. And we might want to extend the arms back behind you right on the floor and back of the hands as you find that lovely full body stretch. And gently, gently bring the arms down alongside you. Just walk your heels back in towards your bottom when you're ready. Giving your knees a little squeeze. And sometimes it's nice to move the knees, you can circle them or just have a little rock or sometimes it's just nice to be, to be still. And that each time we enter practice, we, we find we want to do something different, or I do. And then just bring your feet down to the floor one last time, so you can roll onto one side, wherever there's space, <laughs> avoiding the leg leg. And then come and join me in a comfortable position with your hands resting. Again, your knees, your lap, whatever feels nice on the shoulders. Somewhere again where you can find a, a nice heavy, Feeling in your hips, but a lightness up through the spine. So I started the practice with that uh, kind of silly uh, little description of Corona Coaster. So I'll, I'll end with something a little bit more profound. And it's the last uh, line from the film Jojo Rabbit. Lovely film. And it's the line from a poem by Rilke. Who wrote... Let everything happen to you, beauty and terror. Just keep going. No feeling is final. And so as you bring your hands together at your heart, dropping your chin down towards your chest, remember wherever you are on that corona coaster, no feeling is final. It will all be different. Very soon. 
So namaste. Thank you for your practice. Thank you, thank you. Oh, let me unmute everybody.